Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Four Palestinians killed in series of Israeli attacks. Kashmiri journalist Asif Sultan charged again. Polisario Front suspends ties with Spain. And Mexico's AMLO secures support in recall vote. In our first story, at least four Palestinians have been killed by Israeli forces in the occupied West Bank within a span of 24 hours. Among them was 17-year-old Mohammed Zakarne, who succumbed to his injuries on April 11th. According to the Quds News Network, an Israeli Special Forces unit raided an industrial area in Janin City on Sunday. Zakarne was shot in the leg with an explosive bullet, which is illegal under international law. Occupied forces also killed 21-year-old Mohammed Ali Ghanem on Sunday night. He was shot in the back during a military raid in Al Khadr, south of Bethlehem. On Sunday morning, occupation forces shot 47-year-old Ghada Ibrahim Al Aridi Sabatin from Hussan village near Bethlehem. She was visually impaired and a widowed mother of six children. Sabatin was unarmed and could be seen raising her hands before she was shot. She died due to major blood loss from a torn artery. Hours later, 24-year-old Maha Al-Zatri was killed after allegedly carrying out a stabbing operation at a checkpoint in Hebron. Occupation forces also raided the West Bank district of Jenin for the second consecutive day on April 10th. The crackdown has intensified after a shooting in Tel Aviv last week, which killed three Israelis. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett has granted full freedom of action to the army and the intelligence agency Shin Beth. At least 36 people were arrested from Jerusalem and the West Bank on Sunday. According to Wafa News, dozens were injured with live bullets and tear gas in areas including Jericho and Tulkaram. We move on to India, where a Kashmiri journalist, Asif Sultan, has been booked under India's Public Safety Act. This follows just days after he was granted bail by a special court in Srinagar. Sultan has spent four years in jail after his arrest in August 2008. He was charged under India's Draconian Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, or the UAPA. Police accused Sultan of harnessing known militants, a charge which his family has vehemently denied. He was also charged with murder and conspiracy against the state. Sultan's family and employer argued that he was targeted for a story he had written about the killing of Kashmiri militant leader Burhan Wani. Police claimed that Sultan's name had come up in a separate investigation related to a gunfight. They also claimed to have seized papers bearing the letterhead of the banned militant group Hezbollah Mujahideen from his possessions. Sultan's lawyers have denounced the charges as fabricated, stating that he was not even present at the scene of the gunfight. Sultan was finally granted bail on April 5th, with the court noting that there was no direct or substantial evidence against him. However, as per reports, he was not released from custody. Sultan has now been charged under the Public Safety Act, which allows authorities to detain a person without trial for up to two years. The Kashmir Walad reported that 35-year-old was transferred to the Kod Bhalwal jail in April 10th. Yes, Sultan is the third Kashmiri journalist to be charged under the PSA in 2022. Western Sahara's independence movement, the Polisario Front, has suspended its ties with Spain. It has condemned Madrid for its, quote, instrumentation of the Western Sahara question in shameful bargaining with the occupier, end quote. The break in ties will last until Spain conforms with decisions of international legality. This includes the recognition of the Sahrawi people's right to self-determination and the borders of their country as internationally recognized. Morocco has occupied Western Sahara since the withdrawal of Spanish colonizers in 1975. The Polisario Front has been resisting this occupation and the exploitation of the region's resources for decades. The movement also governs 20% of the Western Sahara as the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic. In 1991, a UN-led peace process resulted in a ceasefire and a settlement plan for the region. This would include an independence referendum to decide the fate of Western Sahara. Not only has Morocco not conducted this referendum, it violated the ceasefire in 2020. 
It is also responsible for routine right violation, including air attacks and arrests of Sahrawi activists. On March 18, 2022, Spain declared its support for Morocco's 2007 plan for the region. Under this, Western Sahara would be granted autonomy under the kingdom's sovereignty. The Polisario Front stated that the plan would legitimize the annexation of the region. The move also prompted protests by progressive sections within Spain. Algeria has also recalled its ambassador to Madrid over the decision. And finally, President Andres Manuel López Obrador has won Mexico's first-ever recall referendum. According to initial results released by the National Electoral Institute, between 90.3% to 91.9% .9 of voters backed AMLO. Between 6.4% and 7.8% voted to have the president's mandate revoked before its official end in October 2024. The turnout for the vote on April 10th remained between 17 and 18 percent. This was well below the 40 percent threshold required to make the referendum's result binding. However, the president had stated that if the majority voted against him, he would resign even if the threshold had not been met. AMLO had himself called the referendum, arguing that it was vital to validate his mandate. He had pledged to strengthen participatory democracy in Mexico during his campaign. The president has been criticized by the opposition over his handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. Other issues include inflation, a controversial energy reform, and drug trafficking. Despite this, a recent survey by El Financiero has shown that the president has a favorable rating of 57%. The Mexican people have supported AMLO's social policies, including soft loans and decent pensions. His ruling Morena party has taken progressive stance on issues including reproductive rights and LGBTQ rights. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.